In this video, we will see about AC voltage regulator feeding RL load. In single phase AC voltage regulator with R load, the voltage and current are always in phase. So it is easy to analyze the performance of the AC voltage regulator with R load. However, in case of RL load, the voltage and current are not in phase. I lacks V by the load angle phi. So this plays an important role in the performance of the AC voltage regulator. In case of R load, alpha can be varied from 0 to 180 degree. Whereas in case of RL load, this load angle will determine the range of alpha. So alpha greater than load angle phi and alpha less than or equal to load angle phi. So we will see the performance for the for these two conditions. Let us see the operation for the first condition alpha greater than the load angle phi. So this is the supply voltage and we are giving gate pulse for thyristor T1 at alpha and for thyristor T2 at pi plus alpha. So now you have to um, remember some terms like beta, gamma and alpha. So you should know all these three angles. So beta is called extinction angle. So if you see the output current waveform, as soon as you give the gate pulse at alpha for thyristor T1, the current starts to increase and at 180 degree, that is at pi, the voltage will become zero, but current will not become zero because of the presence of inductance. So in case of RL load, current will not become zero at pi. Instead, it comes to zero at some other value that is called the beta or extinction angle. And from beta to pi plus alpha. So T1 is turned off here. So you can see here T1 will conduct from alpha to beta. So T1 will conduct from alpha to beta and beta to pi plus alpha no device will conduct because T2 will be given gate pulse only at pi plus alpha. So beta is less than this pi plus alpha. So T1 gets turned off here whereas T2 is turned on at pi plus alpha. And this gamma is called the conduction period. That is, you can see here, alpha is this point, gamma is this beta point. So beta minus alpha is the gamma period. So gamma is the conduction period. And you can draw the output voltage waveform. So whenever a device is conducting, output voltage will be same as the input voltage. So if you see here, you start from alpha here, it follows the input voltage waveform till beta and from beta to pi plus alpha, the device is not conducting. So output voltage is zero, then it follows the supply voltage. So whenever this device is conducting, source will be connected to the output. So V0 is equal to Vs. So if none of the devices is conducting, output is not connected to the source, output voltage is zero. Okay. Now let us consider the voltage drop across the two thyristors. So two thyristors are, are in anti-parallel. So whatever voltage is appearing across T1 will be just opposite to T2. So from alpha to beta, thyristor T1 is conducting. So that will be a small voltage drop. So that is shown as a positive one. Since two thyristors are on anti-parallel, 
T2 will be negative of this one. So, when no device is conducting from beta to pi plus alpha, the thyristor will be subjected to the supply voltage. So, this voltage, supply voltage will appear across the thyristor. Now, you can note one thing is that the conduction angle that is gamma which is given by beta minus alpha, it is less than 180 degree because you can say this is 180 degree but alpha is somewhere here and beta is less than pi plus alpha. So, surely this gamma conduction angle is less than 180 degree. So, you will understand the importance of this gamma in the next case. Now, let us find the value of beta, the extinction angle. So, whenever the device is conducting, this is the equation. So, I naught R plus L into di by dt is equal to supply voltage. So, solving this equation, you will get this as the solution and you have to find what is the value of A. So, before that, what is Z? Z is equal to root of R square plus X square and what is phi? That is the load angle tan inverse of XL by R. Now, how to find this A? Apply some initial condition. So, we know that at omega t equal to alpha, I naught is 0. And we also have a condition omega t equal to beta, I naught equal to 0. So, let us first substitute this initial condition and find what is the value of A. So, I naught you put I naught equal to 0 here and instead of omega t substitute alpha and find what is the value of A. So, you will get the value of A. Substitute this A here and simplify the equation. Again, you have to apply this condition, initial condition in this equation and again you will get a what is I naught value in terms of beta. So, beta load angle alpha, three different parameters will be there and that too as a sine function. So, it is a bit complicated equation. It is not easy to solve the equation manually. So, let us stop the equation with this and you need some computational methods to solve those equations. Okay. So, by this method, you can solve and find the beta. Okay. It is enough if you stop with this. So, let us go to the second condition. Let us consider this case alpha is equal to load angle. So, this is the voltage uh, waveform and the current waveform. They have a phase shift of uh, a file load angle. And we are making uh, alpha is equal to load angle. So, let us take alpha here. So, it is equal to load angle. So, what is alpha? It means that it is the instant at which the thyristor T1 is triggered. So, T1 is given the gate pulse here. Uh, so, what will be T2 gate pulse? It will be pi plus alpha. So, at this instant T2 will be triggered. So, now we can see that when alpha is given, T1 starts to conduct the current, T1 current will flow and it becomes 0 at this instant, at which instant T2 will start conduction. So, you can see that the load current is a continuous one. It means that the load is always connected to the source. So, T1 conducts from alpha to pi plus alpha or pi plus this load angle and T2 will conduct from pi plus alpha to 2 pi plus alpha that is a 2 pi plus 5. So, it keeps on conducting and there is no gap. So, load is always connected to the source. It means that there is no control over the output. You are not able to control the output voltage. So, the current is continuous and you have to see one thing, what is this gamma? It is the conduction period. So, it is from this period to this period that is pi plus alpha to alpha. 
so you will get this as 180 degree so in the previous case when alpha is greater than one this load angle suppose i give alpha somewhere here this gamma will be surely less than 180 degree but if i take this case alpha equal to load angle always this gamma is equal to 180 degree and in that case there is no control over the output so let us consider this case alpha less than load angle so we have seen that v and i will have a phase difference of phi and we are giving alpha less than phi what is alpha that is at this instant we are giving gate pulse for t1 okay. so t2 to should be given gate pulse at pi plus alpha so it is somewhere here t2 will be triggered now you can see one thing uh, though i give a gate pulse uh, at alpha t1 will not conduct at this point because t2 is carrying the negative current till this load angle phi so t2 is conducting so t1 cannot conduct so t1 will start conduction only at this load angle phi okay though i give the gate pulse at alpha the starting period will be only phi and t1 starts conduction and it current will become zero only at this point pi plus alpha so though i give gate pulse for t2 t2 will not conduct only when t1 current becomes zero it will start conduction okay so it is similar to the previous case alpha equal to load angle so both the modes will be same the load will be always connected to the seal source and there is no control over the output and one more thing you have to note down here is the conduction angle so the conduction angle is again equal to 180 degree so you can remember that when the conduction angle is equal to 180 degree the load will be always connected to the source and there is no control over the output now another thing you have to note down here is that you cannot apply pulse triggering for this type of circuit already we have seen that why we are giving some continuous gate pulse instead of a pulsed gate pulse in the previous case so if i give a pulse gate pulse like this okay so usually we used to give a pulse type of gate pulse for thyristor so in this case if i give a pulse like this t1 is not turned on here actually it is turned on here so i should give a pulse here then only it will get turned on so if i give one pulse here the rest of t1 will not will never get turned on so what is done is usually a gate pulse will be given like this so continuous gate pulse will be given but there is some drawback so that if you see the this this type of uh, pulse is called pulse triggering and this type of pulse is called continuous triggering and this is called high frequency triggering so in this this is sufficient in case of r load but in case of r load you may need to give a continuous gate pulse because otherwise the device may not get turned on but the problem with this method is that it is um, continuously you are applying the voltage so it means that it um, heat will be generated in the gate circuit and it is also loss and you can go for high frequency carrier gating that is a train of pulses will be given so this can also be adapted so let us go to the summary in single phase ac voltage regulator with the rl load the load phase angle plays an important role that is the phi will determine the range of the firing angle alpha so for alpha greater than uh, phi v naught and i naught is controlled 
whereas um, alpha less than 5 you cannot have any control over the output so for a rl load this is the condition whereas in case of r load you can control from 0 to 5 whereas in rl load this load angle will decide the alpha range if you like the video do subscribe to read electric vehicle channel and if you need any other topic you can just uh, specify in the comment section these are the references